All right, folks, welcome to Tank Tuesday. We got Bonnie, we got Clyde, we got Sheriff, we got Liz, and we got some potentially bad news. Look at the crawfish pincher down there. That belongs to our pet crawfish, Red Junior, and I'm not sure if he got eaten or if he just lost a claw. We can spot some of the crawfish. That's Larry the Lobster back there. We got Big Red over here, but we're whenever we do our water change, we're gonna search for Red Junior and find out if he's still in here or not. And these fish keep uprooting my plants. Bad fish. That's right. Look how innocent they are in there right now. You drop a dozen minnows in and they completely change personalities. They will go through any plant to get that minnow. So we're going to do our typical water change. We're going to plant our plants back, do a little bit of cleanup on this tank, search for Red Junior, and then we got, oh, got a yawn coming. And then we have some uh, good news. We got our other pet fish named and we also added some new fish to the 55 gallon. Plus, we have a really cool shot of this guy right here meeting a lizard, a live lizard, for the first time this week. So that's coming up here in just a minute. As always, we let you all name the pets, and the most popular names for the sharks were Bruce and Jaws. So this right here is going to be Bruce, and this guy right here is going to be Jaws. So those were the most popular names. There was probably at least a thousand comments for Bruce. And also, guys, there were a ton of comments letting us know that these were Colombian sharks, and we knew that, and we know that they're gonna have to eventually make it into brackish water and eventually even salt water, and we got a plan set up for that. But we're gonna show you a couple of the new fish that we got this week. We have a couple of Siamese algae eaters, and let me tell you, these guys do work. They eat all day long. They literally troll around this aquarium, picking off every little piece of algae they can get. And we have one new pet. Check him out back there sucked to the back of the tank. That is a Pleco. And those can grow really big as well, but they're excellent algae eaters. Alright, and check out this guy over here. The number one name that popped up was Casper. Kind of like Casper the Ghost for the albino. Liz liked it, so that fish is now named Casper. And look at here. We also have the channel cat. Look at how big the channel cat's gotten. Wait till you see his belly. And that guy has been eaten. So for the channel cat, we had several really funny names. We're kind of thinking about whiskers or something like Jackie Chan. Chan short for channel. So let us know. That's the only one we haven't really came up with a name. Look at how big he is. And he's already gotten big. Last week they were the same size. Tell us if you like whiskers or Jackie Chan down below. And this is our cat, Buster. He sits there and watches these fish all day long, so he gets to cast the first vote. Buster, just make a cat face if you want him to be named Whiskers, and raise one paw if you vote for Jackie Chan. Whoa, we got a raised paw. That means Buster's vote is for Jackie Chan. All right, Liz was freaking out. She said we have some sort of lizard slash salamander or skink or something along those lines that is in the house. So we are about to potentially put him in the tank because we don't allow trespassers. Well, oh, there he is. Got him. All right, I told Liz we'd never take any lizards and put them in the tank, but since this guy trespassed, he's got no choice. Bonnie and Clyde are going to show you what happens to trespassers. Alright, so we're about to do a little feeding here. And with the algae eaters and the plecos, you can drop some algae wafers in there. And sometimes they'll eat those in addition to all the algae they find in the tank. And then we also got some bottom pellets. We got some little shrimp pellets to drop down. And that's what the catfish, the channel catfish, has been loving. But the sharks have still been eating up on the surface a lot. But the, the two catfish are loving those little shrimp pellets. So we're about to drop some of that in. And they should all come to life. Alright, we got some surface activity there. We got the channel cat out. We got, the, we got Casper active. Now that guy right there is an aggressive feeder. I hadn't dropped 
man, look at how fast he is. I haven't dropped the shrimp pellets in yet. We're about to drop a couple of those in. Let's see if those go up. I did drop a couple algae wafers in there. All right, there we go. That's what the shrimp pellets look like. They're floating down now. Look, the shark's getting one of the pellets. It's a battle. Albino one, Casper one. All right, Liz, get the tape measure. Guys, something we're fixing to start doing. You see how much water they knock out of the aquarium? We're fixing to start a distance meter on how far they knocked it out. Liz, right measure here. from right there to right here. <laughs> 46 inches. They knocked water for almost four feet out of the aquarium. These guys are savages. When they come up and blow up on a minnow, water everywhere. So we're gonna start a record book. Right now it's almost four feet. All right, as always, whenever we drop the water levels down, we'll go ahead and drop some pellets in to see if we can get these crawfish out and eating. It's a good easy time for them to come out and eat because the bass probably aren't too interested in eating them at the moment. The old crawfish has come out to eat. We're going to see if Sheriff wants to eat a pellet. Yep. You got one. Sheriff likes the shrimp pellets. We got Sheriff eating some of them. We got one of the crawfish coming out to eat some of them. You know they can smell that shrimp. So this is a typical thing that we do every week or two. We change out our filter and we've been using the pinky filters and we've had some really good results with those. And we've also had really good results with the Purigen, so we're adding another Purigen bag down to the sump. Alright guys, everything's going good in this tank, but we need to make some improvements. So we have our canister filter return pipe right here and the suction pipe right here. And you can tell up here on the surface level there's just not a lot of circulation going on, a lot of stagnant water. So the best thing you can do in these cases is add a pump or some people call it, you know, circulation wave makers and things like that. This is the one we're gonna add for this tank. We've already put two in our 300 gallon tank. All right, and the one thing I wanna talk about here is your flow rate. And what they typically say is you need 10 to 20 times your tank size flow rate so we have a 55 gallon we're putting in a 565 gallon per hour pump so that's going to give us roughly 10 times the size so if this doesn't work really good we're going to put in another one and then we'll have 20 times our size of our tank and flow rate so we're going to add that we're getting pretty good push over here so what we're going to do is we're going to add that one at the top over here sending everything back and hopefully it'll just sit there and circulate back around so that ought to give us some good circulation we're fixing to install that guy now all right guys we just got it set up and i can tell you i'm already pleased with it look at all that stuff that it's kicking around that was just stagnant in the water so that is what you call good flow whenever you on the other side of the tank if you still have good flow and good particle movement you know you got a good tank set up the only thing i'm worried about is we probably got to move this plant because it's getting sucked in the intake right here but Beyond that, I'm definitely pleased with it. I will let you guys know in the next video if I recommend it. All right, we got the tank looking good and we're gonna do like we do at the end of all of our Tank Tuesday videos. We're gonna go back and answer the most popular questions from the previous Tank Tuesday video, starting with... First question comes from NT Goku. Did you catch Sheriff when he was already big? I've had mine for a year and a half and it's nowhere near that size. It was three inches when caught, yes. We caught Sheriff when he was about 12 inches already, so he was a really full-grown bluegill as soon as we caught him. 
Next question comes from King Domestic 5. Bama Bass, do you use the water from where you catch your bass or do you use water conditioner stuff? No, so you can take water directly out of your faucet, but you have to treat it with water conditioner. And the, the main thing you need to do is remove that chlorine and all those things that are unhealthy for the fish. So you can use, you can look in the links in our description and see the types of conditioner that we use. Next question from Devin Hotline. Question, where do you get the amount of minnows that's needed to feed them every day? Well, we actually live down here on the Mobile Delta, and at the closest landing, that's only probably a half a mile from where we live, they have a, a boat landing, and they sell crickets and minnows and worms and things like that, and the name of it's Busby's, and that's where we get all of the minnows that we feed our fish. All right, and last question comes from Michael Mike. How often do you do water changes on the 300-gallon aquarium? We do a change at least once a week, but the, the key is, is you need to do your, you need to test your water parameters and see how many nitrates and nitrites and that sort of thing. So that way you know how much of a water change to do. You can do as low as a 10% change. You can do as much as a 50% change. So based on your parameters, that'll kind of tell you how much water change you need to do. All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up. This is the end of our Tank Tuesday. I'm going to let these fish have the final word. Bonnie, what do you have to say to all the YouTubers out there? Okay, like and subscribe. All right, folks, so make sure you're subscribed to our Tank Tuesdays. We put out videos of these fish every Tuesday, as well as our 55-gallon aquarium, showing you the feeding and all the savage things they do. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you all next Tuesday. Children.